I'm Matza from Assimilate. Join me on this series with Atomos, Assimilate and ProRes RAW. Welcome to a brief explanation of Apple ProRes RAW and why it is a fantastic RAW format to work with. But let's start by looking at RAW formats in general and what differentiates them from normal ProRes or H.264 files for instance. The following images and information have been taken from Apple's ProRes RAW white paper which I recommend to take a look at if you want to know more details about this format. Let's start. Digital camera sensors consist of an array of millions of light sensitive elements called photocytes that convert the light exposed to the sensor to an array of digital intensity values. So far the camera is just capturing a black and white image, brighter or less bright. To capture color, most current digital cameras use a color filter array that yields a single primary color value, such as red, green or blue, at each photocyte location. The most used color filter arrangement is known as a Bayer pattern, where each 2x2 group of photocytes consists of one red, one blue and two green sensor elements. In contrast, conventional RGB images consist of not one, but three primary color values, red, green and blue, at each pixel location. And that is basically what our displays expect, a red, green and blue value for each pixel. So whenever the file is storing mosaic data like a Bayer pattern, it can be described as a true RAW format. Note that RAW formats can also be compressed. Every RAW, for instance, has a tonal compression by applying a log curve, which brings the 16-bit linear signal from the sensor into a 12-bit log format, which results in lower file sizes. Alternatively, or in addition to that, the file itself can be compressed using a DCT like JPEG 2000 or Cineform, or in our case, ProRes. So in order to get an image out of this pixel mud, Usually your software of choice has to perform two steps. First, decode or decompress the file in order to get to the Bayer pattern. This applies to all DCT compressed RAW formats like Red RAW, Sony RAW or ProRes RAW. Next, once we have the Bayer pattern, we need to convert it into a usable RGB image. The process of converting a Bayer pattern into a conventional RGB image is known as debayering or more generally, demosaicing. For conventional video, demosaicing and other processing operations are performed in camera to produce viewable RGB images that can be recorded into a video file, like a ProRes clip. At playback time, an application only needs to decode the conventional video file to produce RGB images that can be edited and displayed. The demosaicing and processing have already been performed by the camera at capture time and are, so to speak, burned in. In contrast, ProRes RAW directly encodes the Bayer pattern image. So the demosaicing and processing that otherwise would have happened in camera are now performed by the software reading the ProRes RAW file. This applies to any RAW file actually. The big advantage of this is that the debayering and processing algorithms are not tied to the hardware but can be improved over time and yield higher quality images from the same raw material. So at the end of the day, what's the difference between a normal ProRes file and a ProRes RAW file? Easy. A conventional ProRes file stores the processed or baked image data, whereas a ProRes RAW file stores the unprocessed Bayer pattern, which makes it a true RAW format. Now I know, some of you might say, well, but don't all RAW formats have white balance controls? If ProRes RAW doesn't have white balance controls, how can it be a true RAW format? Well, as we now have established, whether or not a format can call itself a true RAW format depends on what kind of data it stores, Bayer pattern or baked RGB imagery. That however doesn't change the fact that Kelvin Tint and ISO gain are super helpful parameters when it comes to develop a RAW image inside a color corrector or editor. We've listened to our users asking for more control over the ProRes RAW debayer. So we followed up on that request and now Scratch and Play Pro ship with white balance controls for ProRes RAW. In the next video I'll show you not only how to convert ProRes RAW to a conventional ProRes file keeping the original log image, 
but we'll also take a look at how to grade ProRes RAW and Scratch and export a lot from the grade to be used with the transcoded ProRes files in other applications like Premiere or Final Cut. See you there!